and our mobility within the region is being even more challenged, challenged. and there is a necessity. We all agree that there is a necessity to be working together more, but what is the framework, what is the framework that could be helpful, and how can we start building trust among the different operators and alliances working in the field to, uh, to be able to take it a step further uh, in terms of working together and networking. left 
the young Arab theater fund, which became independent of the Arab Arts Project and continued, and there's also the Arab Theater Training Center that is registered in Lebanon, and it is run by people from Jordan, Bahrain, and um, Lebanon. We also uh, twinned as a company with the Taiwanese theater company in Jordan and developed what was a small theater festival into a big important focal point for Arab independent um, artists, uh, which also gradually developed a, um, a big network of partners and uh, curators and so on. Um, in Amman. And then came um, Tamasi. So I just need a, a very short description of Tamasi, and I'll do it in Arabic. Tamasi, 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 established in 2008 to support the international arts and it's made out of 11 performing arts organizations from Egypt, Jordan, Lebanon and Palestine and these are organizations who have long experience in these arts in a way that shows how we deeply believe in the pivotal role of culture and art in achieving social and political justice. Tamasi Collective also aims at enhancing our capacities as independent organizations to resist people who want to marginalize arts and we work in the countries of the MENA region in general and with the Palestinian artists in particular that are being isolated so we try to break that and maximize the resources available for the performing arts sector to enable it to grow in a vital, sustainable and viable way in our region and worldwide as well. There is also this idea of being distinguished from others because sometimes we are asked to do something other than this art uh, privilege. As it was ye said yesterday about uh, the dead people in Garden Speaks, so the idea here is sustainability. I don't want to go into details because I want to listen also to, uh, to the other speakers and to the audience. Now I'll go back to English. We've always tried to um, work on the idea that when somebody wants to uh, send me a letter um, and on, on the address it was a mail, and on the address it said, um, it said, Tamasi not work. And actually somebody made this uh, in the morning. So <coughs> we are trying to be sort of what you might call work nets rather than networks. And it should always start from the idea of working together and doing things and the net growing organically from our collaborations with all the difficulties we know, inherent you know, in human nature and so on, and in the objective difficulties in the environments we're working in. But it's always been part of our idea that we want to, like in love or food, uh, being virtual is not enough. I mean, you really have to um, engage. Um, um, well, one of the big, big uh, challenges is foreign funding because of the suspicion that it always creates. Uh, maybe a little less so now, although Egypt is coming back. Um, in our constituency, um, among our peers, and also from our autocratic uh, rulers who themselves are much more dependent on foreign funding than we are, but that are always attacking us on this and using the fact that there is always this suspicion of normalization with Israel and this, all this kind of thing. Um, and I suppose there is a justification for this, and that is, and, and this was said yesterday in a jocular manner, I can't compete with uh, the guy who talked about the Middle East and what you've always wanted to know about it, and that is the double standards of the West very often in dealing with political and historical questions in our region, um, uh, Palestine to name but a few, um, and the fact that uh, uh, the, power, um, the powers that be in the West are supporting the um, theocratic uh, states 
and the movement, theocratic, and providing arms to the dictators who are turning them against their people, and so on. So, I mean, uh, negotiating in the middle of all this, uh, the cultural and artistic funding is very, very um, uh, difficult. Also, uh, the, uh, cluster, the clustering, I mean, we organically created all sorts of connections before they were called networks, but there's always this idea that it is cheaper by the dozen. So if you negotiate with 11 organizations, which is what we are, including Shams in Lebanon, and Ahmed uh, um, uh, in Cairo, and Ahmed al Attar, I mean, these are the people you probably know uh, most. Uh, it, is, it is cheaper to uh, administratively, and in terms of you know, cost, admin costs, to negotiate with 11 organizations than do it individually. Um, and the people who help us network uh, systematically, and that is uh, three Swedish, we call them the Swedish graces, who, who sort of saw this clustering coming as, a, as fate, and so they helped us gradually learn to live together and work together. I mean, that was saying about our not being used to working together. In fact, we work to be, we bury the dead together. And we, we, our communities are very much networked, but not uh, not our profession so much. Um, so, and we always try to give our, our uh, networks, uh, despite the pressure from outside, um, a kind of backbone based on the belief that strength is in unity despite our diversity, our diversities, and that one man's need may be another man's need rather than necessarily their poison. Um, and now the challenges I think that we are up against urgently now is to assure the perennity of not only our organizations but, but of our vision and our um, uh, drive, I suppose, Elan, um, against the erosion of time. I think that organizations come with the idea of perennity and then they, um, they become um, they, they have to find ways of renewing themselves. And I think that young people all over the world now are creating new forms and, and new ideas that we should be maybe listening to. I was reading in Liberation the other day, a fantastic um, thing from the Collective for Catastrophe, uh, which I uh, advise people to look at. Um, and then we have to find ways to um, uh, uh, to, to work together with our differences. We've had you know, problems, interpersonal problems, problems to do with uh, temperament uh, and so on. We had to create our internal laws to be able to continue to work together and to continue our uh, message. Okay, because I think you raised many important questions that will probably come up in the discussion. But um, two comments that come to my mind that we, perhaps we should keep in mind is the role of the networks in advocacy for the whole sector, not only for the old partners. This, this I, I wish this would be actually discussed because if you have a network of six, seven organizations working for the development of their organization, this is fantastic. But uh, the magnitude of work in terms of lobbying and advocacy that is needed in our country is huge. And we, I'd like to hear more about um, the programs in, in, the, in regards of engaging bigger audiences and beneficiaries more than the partner organizations. The other issue about funding, I think it's, there's a difference between a funded project and a project that is donor driven in a way. And this is something that I wish to be raised again in the discussion. There's a difference between people deciding to mobilize together or a um, third party realizing it's easier for them to manage the funds so let's get people together. It doesn't mean that one is better than one is good, mm -hmm. but it means that the results and the outputs expected and the dynamic of the process would be a bit different. So um, from the regional to the local, Palestine has uh, its first network, program network, and Imam Hamouri is here to talk about it, and to talk also about some informal projects that created uh,
approaches are created in formal networks in, in, in the first place. في المضبوط لما بدي احكي قبل ما احكي بدي اعرف حالي ايمان حموري مدير مركز الفن الشعبي I'm the head of the popular center and the network for the arts in Palestine. But before speaking about this network, I need to speak about an inspiring experience that made it possible for us to create sustainable and successful networks. It was necessary for us to protect the civil works done by Palestinians. Be and this is for all sectors, and through this we were able to face uh, occupation. So when the authority was created, uh, there was uh, an attempt to weaken uh, this uh, organization, whether through laws or through imposing difficult laws on them, or through asking the donors to do their uh, to give their donations through the authority, the Palestinian Authority. So we have suffered from that for years, but we have done all that was necessary to protect the Palestinian resilience and resistance. So this was able to create a lot of achievements, and it was necessary to find a way through more efforts to succeed even more. This is why we decided to have networks that are more specialized. We started working in the year 2000. So we created the network without working on it to become more mature. So there was no maturity and the pre-discussions and the vision and the discussion and the debates. This is why it waited for one year or two years, then it disappeared. Then again, in 2010 and 2011, that there was this need to have some kind of an assembly or a gathering because the donors were trying to stop their funding for the cultural sector in Palestine. And this was a problem. Also, the mediator who was from the same country wanted to stop these donations for other cultural sectors. So here we needed to intervene so that the sector can continue. And there was kind of lobbying from our gathering so that we could work all together for the perennity of our project. So we were able actually to succeed in this program. And this is the cultural program especially performance arts. In 2015, the network was uh, registered, and we had a feeling of ownership towards uh, this gathering. Sometimes we've had hot debates because we didn't all have the same vision. We didn't all have the same way of thinking and the same way of working. And each one of us thought of themselves as, an, as being the emperor. And uh, we used to think about the others. Who are they? Who are they to work? We always thought that we were better than the others. But today, with all sincerity, it's not because I want to do some promotion for our work. No, but now we have more trust. I'm not saying that this is a rosy picture, but out of the 12 members, I can say that among eight or nine of the 12 members, we have total harmony. And we also want the work to be outside the framework. Yes, in the beginning we said that we want the network to serve only its members, but now we are working on a five-year plan to see how we can serve the cultural sector in general. So this is a very important element that is advocacy and the lobbying on the level of the culture inside the country and to see how we can work on the official level as well. We're also thinking of uh, pressuring and exerting pressures on the donors and the way they support the cultural sector. Yes, I know that sometimes we have the human rights issue, but if we don't care about the cultural sector as a sector on its own, then it will be a disaster for us. There are also other networks. I don't want to say that these are coalitions, but uh, I can say that they more work on coordinating programs. 
like Kalandia Dauli, like us, for example, and three other organizations, we work on a children's festival. But this is more a work of coordinating programs and not a real network, and it doesn't work on advocacy and lobbying. But now in the performance art uh, company, a big part of our work is uh, lobbying and exerting pressures so that we can change some of the policies. The last point that I want to say is that I'm here today because people in the network trust that I will be here representing the 12 members of the network and because the network is interested in working and coordinating with other networks around. Yesterday you spoke about uh, donations and funding. And this morning we said that we need to meet as networks. We need to meet once a year, and maybe we can find something practical for the coming years to see how we can really have an impact on the funding policy with all the partners, the, the European partners and the Arab partners on the regional, local and international levels, so that there is a plan to be able to exert pressures on the funding partners so that they can change their cultural policies. Thank you. Thank you, Iman. I have only one observation. Working on advocacy and uh, lobbying is very important for the whole sector. And I see this as uh, evolution and development in the networking because for now this is the only network that is clear in Palestine. But I'm afraid of having like um, only geographical uh, networks, like having one in Jerusalem and another one in Gaza. Because when you have this, then uh, you all, uh, all your efforts will be disparate and won't be joint. The idea that there is a trend in Palestine to separate and divide the country more and more, not everyone, yes. First of all, yes, we have the Israeli occupation, but if we see the funders or the circumstances and the wall, you see that there are people uh, trying to divide uh, Palestine to, so that you have the West Bank alone, Gaza alone, uh, so that it seems that we're not one state. So I'm afraid that if there is another network in Palestine, I think this is making things more dangerous on the level of the division. So I know that there are people who would like this much, so we shouldn't be subjected to it. And networks should be gathering people and not dividing them or separating them from each other, whether from the donors or the authority or ourselves. It doesn't matter. About this issue, and the authority or a part of the law imposes some limitations. These networks are also for the Palestinians that are outside Palestine and for the Palestinians of 1948 and for Gaza as well. But we cannot be officially registered for the people of 1948 and we said that they need to be with us maybe in an informal way so that they are represented, so that all Palestinians are represented within our network. Let us now speak about the local level. Now we went from the regional to the national and now to the local. We have uh, Sufyan from Tunisia. He will be displaying now a movie about Dream City. It's about uh, promoting the relationship. Maybe it's not something formal, but it's about networking with the society and the stakeholders in general. Yes, so we'll watch the movie and then we'll give Sufyan some time to explain it to us. Sufyan, do you have something to add after this movie? I don't know if the second part was translated. 
But in brief, the project where we reach a school today, we have signed with the Ministry of National Education a convention for over four years in order to invest in all primary schools in Tunisia with a training program. The first part is to transform the, uh, the schools from a space dedicated to artistic gestures and uh, artistic practice in primary schools where we did not have uh, artistic gestures, gestures and arts. I just for the second part today is uh, through a network that we have established all uh, high uh, art institutes in Tunis will be working uh, in the framework of a protocol that will lead in 2018. There are also other networks. I don't want to say that these are coalitions, but uh, I can say that they more work on coordinating programs like Kalandia Dauli, like us, for example, and three other organizations. We work on a children's festival. But this is more a work of coordinating programs and not a real network, and it doesn't work on advocacy and lobbying. But now in the performance art uh, company, a big part of our work is uh, lobbying and exerting pressures so that we can change some of the policies. The last point that I want to say is that I'm here today because people in the network trust that I will be here representing the 12 members of the network and because the network is interested in working and coordinating with other networks around. Yesterday you spoke about uh, donations and funding. And this morning we said that we need to meet as networks. We need to meet once a year, and maybe we can find something practical for the coming years to see how we can really have an impact on the funding policy with all the partners, the, the European partners and the Arab partners on the regional, local and international levels, so that there is a plan to be able to exert pressures on the funding partners so that they can change their cultural policies. Thank you. Thank you, Iman. I have only one observation. Working on advocacy and uh, lobbying is very important for the whole sector. And I see this as uh, evolution and development in the networking because for now this is the only network that is clear in Palestine. But I'm afraid of having like um, only geographical uh, networks, like having one in Jerusalem and another one in Gaza. Because when you have this, then uh, you all, uh, all your efforts will be disparate and won't be joined. The idea that there is a trend in Palestine to separate and divide the country more and more, not everyone, yes. First of all, yes, we have the Israeli occupation, but if we see the funders or the circumstances and the wall, you see that there are people uh, trying to divide uh, Palestine to, so that you have the West Bank alone, Gaza alone, uh, so that it seems that we're not one state. So I'm afraid that if there is another network in Palestine, I think this is making things more dangerous on the level of the division. So I know that there are people who would like this much, so we shouldn't be subjected to it, and networks should be gathering people and not dividing them or separating them from each other, whether from the donors or the authority or ourselves. It doesn't matter. About this issue, and the authority or a part of the law imposes some limitations. These networks are also for the Palestinians that are outside Palestine and for the Palestinians of 1948 and for Gaza as well. But we cannot be officially registered for the people of 1948 and we said that they need to be with us maybe in an informal way so that they are represented, so that all Palestinians are represented within our network. Let us now speak about the local level. Now we went from the regional to the national and now to the local. We have uh, Sufyan from Tunisia. He will be 
displaying now a movie about Dream City. It's about promoting the relationship. Maybe it's not something formal, but it's about networking with the society and the stakeholders in general. Yes, so we'll watch the movie and then we'll give Sufyan some time to explain it to us. Sofian, do you have something to add after this movie? I don't know if the second part was translated, but in brief, it's a project where we reach a school. Today, we have signed with the Ministry of National Education a convention for over four years in order to invest in all primary schools in Tunisia with a gaming program. The first part is to transform the, uh, the schools from a space dedicated to artistic gestures and uh, artistic practice in primary schools where we did not have uh, artistic gestures, gestures and arts. I just for the second part today is uh, through a network that we have established all uh, high uh, art institutes in Tunis will be working uh, in the framework of a protocol that will lead in 2018 to the construction of uh, an educational and artistic program dedicated to uh, children aged between 5 and 12 years. It will be a national program that will be developed on the Tunisian territory as of uh, the end of 2018. What's interesting is uh, the exchange of knowledge so that this protocol will be transferred from one part uh, of Tunisia to the other. We will be covering the whole uh, Tunisian territory and all in order for the schools to be developed. It will be tailor-made to the specificities of each territory and uh, the relevant practices. This uh, mechanism will be used in different regions because it's highly important to be able to be connected today and to be to establish relationships with these uh, Celtic regions after the popular uprisings in Tunisia. In fact, we, uh, we, uh, we do ha have a high uh, trust in a human network in order to be able to implement our project in uh, Tunisia. That's why we have to be work, working uh, closely with the population in order to get to know the emergencies, uh, the, uh, the desires, the hopes, the dreams based on artistic practice and the capacity of artists to perform projects with, a real, with real aesthetics while focusing on the artistic quality and the quality of the approach in order to be able to meet a, a society-related emergency and a political one. Thank you. Um, just one comment. I have seen how the can so I will move to the, there's no longer the other side of things because everything is now interconnected. But uh, Lord, would you like to tell us a bit about your work and connection to the region and your experience in networking? Don't forget to introduce yourself. Okay, hello. Indeed, my uh, perspective is a little bit different, uh, geographically, but also in the work that I did. So, uh, my name is Jurist. Okay. Hello, Bennett. My name is Jurist. I work for the Flanders Arts Institute. So, we are a supporting organization for the Flanders Arts Institute. It's my organization. We are a 
supporting organization and based in Brussels, Belgium. And we work for the support of the professional art students uh, in Flanders in Brussels. I work there as a research coordinator. And so what I would like to share here is uh, my personal experience a little bit also because I'm not organizing or running a network. I've been participating in networks like IDM or research networks on the European level. Uh, we also, in our work at the Institute, we reflect on uh, international collaboration. So we, we think a little bit also about what does it mean to network today, what does it mean for us, for the sector in Flanders, for the last couple of decades. So uh, I'd like to share a little bit of that reflection with you. And in that, that sense, I'd like to connect to the first question which you raised. So uh, are, have we been successful in networking? I think Flanders and Brussels is really a good example of what successes could be uh, developed uh, through networking. In that sense, if you go back to, uh, let's say, the situation in the 1980s when international networking really developed in Europe, this has meant really a, a very much for the scene in Flanders. At that moment, there was really absolutely no policy for contemporary performing arts in Flanders. So there was some theater laws, but this was more for traditional companies. There was no advance funding. Well, there was advance funding, but let's say in 1985, 98, 98% of the dance budget went to the Royal Ballet, and only 2% went, uh, went to contemporary companies, such as Rosas and uh, so it's, it's kind of like a paradox because a lot of uh, internationally renowned artists and founders have developed their work exactly in that in that period, uh, and there was no no policy on the local level. So when when they developed their work, it was really through a combination of international networking, but also very much connected to the local networking strategies. So in that period, circuits, networks, in founders were uh, we started up, but really tackled all the different elements in the ecosystem, advocacy, but also research, documentation, production, co-production, but also presentation, a whole circuit of art centers was directed. So it was really a combination of these local networking strategies with international networking. And the IPM there is very important because it was really the platform for knowledge exchange. How do you set up a festival? But also, what are the arguments in favor of contemporary performing arts? So it really meant a lot. And so the sector has grown significantly since then. We have a cloud to be participated I think the position today is different in that sense that today we are reaching the limits of this transnational co production presentation system. A lot of artists and organizations have the feeling that they are. They are pushing boundaries. Today, they need to be able to produce their work there, and they need to look for more and more international co producers. <coughs> there is a lot of pressure on the budgets. So, the governments, national governments, are stepping back, increasing the funding. More and more organizations want the funding, so, so they have limited means, and they are really forced to find more and more and more partners in order to, in order to be able to sustain the same level of production. There is a lot of economic pressure on the system right now, which is the drive for international collaboration. I think that is a challenge for the networks today, also, from my perspective. You know, the, the networks have really been the drivers of growth. But, uh, I think there is a lot of pressure on the system. We need the transformation of the system. And my question would be, how can the networks really be the drivers of change and of transformation? And this is also the question with which I came here because I see that uh, if we are looking for this new system of tomorrow, what would it be? We should not invent it from scratch. There are a lot of different interesting initiatives happening in the fields on a very local level. We just had a really very brilliant example. We could learn a lot from that. But also people in Flanders are working in this direction. So I think this is really uh, the kind of exchange we need now. There's a lot of pressure here. There's a lot of pressure in, uh, in the West. Of course, conditions are quite different, but you see that artists are really looking for, for similar strategies. And so that would be my question also for the platform here, how we can collaborate in the future in order to facilitate uh, this exchange. Uh, <coughs> 
was very interesting to see that how you've got a full cycle and that you are examining the role and the modalities of, uh, of networks. But the other interesting thing for me is uh, your definition of uh, networks as drivers of growth at a certain point. And I think this is a definition that we in the region can really learn from. And, and it's important that the, the, the remarkable uh, successes that the North Network has had on the policy of the funding of it is, is an exercise for us the uh, modality in the context of our region. Uh, Stefan, and then we have Hello, so I'm Stefan. I work for AFSENA, which is the National Resource Center for Circus Arts, Street Arts, and Theater. And I coordinate Circus Arts Network, which is the European Network for Circus Arts and Street Arts, and I'm based in Paris. So um, I'm going to just give you a little bit of context. I'm, I'm going to be short, all right, and I'm going to be humble and practical. And uh, this is just a story, so you take whatever is interesting for you. It's one example, it works at some point, it will you know, some precise context going on. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to work in any other country in today's uh, context. So, um, we can go back to the 90s for a couple of seconds. So it's 1992, and the president is uh, François Mitterrand, you don't know him. The Minister of Culture is Jack Long, you know him, probably. Yes, and, uh, um, and basically they decide to create the National Theatre Center. A year later, there is a new Minister of Culture, because we like changing them in France. And he's Jacques Dumont. You have never heard about it, but he's still working in the government. Uh, there is no one from the French embassy, so I can trash France. Yeah, it's okay. um, so they decide to create Orlemur, uh, which doesn't translate, it's Orlemur. And uh, Orlemur in 1993 is the National Resource Center for Street Arts only. A couple of years later, it becomes the National Resource Center for Street Arts and Circus Arts. Like that. Now we move to 2016. It's really fast. It's June, the 20th of June, and uh, it's the, the wedding day uh, of uh, Centre National du Théâtre, National Theatre Centre, and Orléans, and they become Arsena. Okay, so that's the, the, the national story, very, very short. There are many interesting things in between. I can share them over coffee and off camera. Um, let's, back, let's go back to networks. So 2003, Olivier creates Chitrasada. What does it mean it creates a network? It means that there are a bunch of people getting together and saying, hey, do you know what's going on there? No, I don't. Oh, let's ask him. Yeah, but did you have this problem? Yes, I have this problem. How did you solve it? Oh, I did that. So basically, it's only about information and knowledge, and how do you use information and knowledge, how do you share it, and how do you use it as an advocacy tool. It's really that. And it starts, let's say, you know, 20 people, 10 countries, small. The network grows, and we are again in 2016. We are almost 90 members from 27 countries, European and, let's say, from the European Union and the European and outside the European borders and outside the European Union. Precise. So we have members from Canada, Australia, we have members from Egypt also. And I hope we're going to have members from Lebanon soon. I'm looking at someone. I know um, Anyway, what do we do? Basically, we produce, share information, we enhance capacity building for our members, and we use all of these to develop and structure the fields or sectors of service and street arts. I'm just going to say one word about the money, because it's important, but where do we get the money? We get the money from the French Ministry of Culture, let's say 40% of our budget, and 60% of our budget comes from the European Commission. Um, two examples, one from the field of street arts and the other from circus arts, to show you what networks can do. 
So we have one activity, it's called Fresh Squid. Basically it's an international seminar happening, you know, the first one took place in Spain last uh, year, and the next one in, in the next one is gonna take place in Portugal in May. So it's just the second uh, edition. And it's an international seminar for all the professional street arts. They get together for three days, they talk, they you know, they do workshop and actually there's a some sort of an impact nationally and at the European level. What is happening now in Portugal? So there is this event taking place, the Minister of Culture suddenly reacts, oh my god, there's a big European event happening in our countries. Why? Well, because that's important that it's happening right now in Portugal. And a very concrete and practical thing, they are deciding to add a category on the um, Convention schemes for circus and street arts because before, if you were a circus artist or street artist, you had to describe your piece in order to get some, you know, public support as a dance or a theater or something else in between. So now they're going to create a new category. It's, you know, it's quite a big deal, and they're doing it and they're going to announce it most, most probably during the seminar. Another example for the circus arts. So basically you have Finland in the you know, early 2000s. There are some things going on, but not so much. And today, thanks to the network and thanks to the people, because the network is not something per se, like here. The network is the members. You have to remind them. And uh, uh, right now, the situation of service arts in, uh, in Finland is you know, the level is super high. It's higher than, than France, of course. It's, you know, the artistic quality, the structure, the development of circus arts is very, very strong. And we're trying to do the same thing for Germany, because Germany circus arts right now are considered just as a commercial activity. And we're trying to push policymakers to understand that, no, it's not only a commercial activity, it's really an artistic practice, you know? And we're trying to, you know, organize conferences. We're trying to get together artists, organizations, and policymakers from the region, from the federal region as well, to understand and actually to show them. You know, we invite them to show so they have realized what's going on. Um, what else can I say? Um, we are, we always think that necros are great. It's fantastic. It is. It's really hard. Really, don't, don't try and think that it's easy to work with people. It's always hard because you have to find you know, the right decision-making process so everybody has a say, but at some point you know, their decision has to be taken. And, uh, um, and you have to also, the members need to be engaged in the project. So, for instance, what we do is that, the, the example I gave you for the event in Portugal, Within the network, there is a work group of people working on the contents of what is going on. And they're bringing the event together. So it's not me sitting on my laptop doing everything. Everything is done in partnership. As for last thing, and then I'm done. Um, I arrived in January 2016, and I, I thought, oh, why don't we do anything with countries like Egypt, Lebanon, and Palestine, and so on the region? Um, and in June, we had a meeting like this one in London, and uh, we invited some people from Egypt, and basically we started discussing, because it, it's really about first meeting each other, discussing, being at the same table, listening to one another and just try to see, okay, what are you doing? I'm doing this, I'm doing this. Okay, can we find a connection? Can we find a way to work together that is useful for you, that is useful for me, that is useful for the fields as well? And as a result of this meeting, we're going to have a, a first, we're going to participate to an, let's say, a lab in Cairo in March, April, about best practices in the region. So basically, some actors from the region are going to get together and you know, discuss practices and we're going to make a publication and share it, you know, work on That's it. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Stefan. Um, interesting presentation. I uh, just want to highlight one point because I found it to be stunning that has to do with financing. 40% of the 
of the funds for the network come from the Ministry of Culture and 60% is from the EU. This is like Christmas for us. <laughs> doesn't exist, and I think it's interesting to see when... That's yeah, right. because yeah. it's, you know, not all the networks are supported like that. <laughs> yes, absolutely, but I think it can come in too, but I think it's interesting to see the potential when uh, in the independent sector in other countries has secured this funding that could actually allow them to mobilize freely without having to mobilize to get the funding or to survive. So I think it's really interesting that, uh, again, it's like Christmas. And to let you know the thing, yeah, to, in, when we, we merged, so, you know, there were two organizations merging into one, and some people on the networks were scared. They said, what is going to happen to the network? And we received a letter from the Minister of Culture saying, well, you're merging, and basically, it doesn't change a thing. We're going to support you anyway because we believe that your service is super important and we're going to keep supporting you as the new organization. And we, we had a letter and we shared it with the members. They were relieved and we were relieved as well. Yeah, anyway. Thank you. Uh, so we move to Christmas. I'm still stuck on this. <laughs> yeah, I want something like that. So back to the region with Sahara Afghan. Sahara brings on a different experience of networking on a different level that has to do with sex. So Sahara. Good morning everyone. I'm Sahara Afghan. I'm an actor, a director, and assistant professor of theater at the American University of Beirut. So basically, I, uh, with my collaborator Robert Myers, we established at AUB what we call the theater initiative because um, we don't have a theater major on campus and we've been doing lots of professional work um, at the university level, at the local and professional level, and internationally. So we created the theater initiative to basically promote and put theater practice and theory at the center of the intellectual life on campus. And I'm also a co-founder of what we call Tahweel Theatre Company, which is a local, uh, a based, uh, you know, uh, theatre ensemble. So I operate between the two. I create work on campus, I create work off campus, and we take it international. I honestly know nothing about networking, and when they invited me, I was like, really? Okay, thank you. I'm flattered, but I'm just going to share what I, um, you know, my experience. So what we do, I think we, I can categorize the work we've been doing with the theater initiative and that we under three or yeah three so far categories. One, we work on disseminating texts from English to Arabic, Arabic to English. For example, we started by producing um, the Rituals of Science and Transformation, a famous text by the Syrian playwright Adela Wanus, and the idea of the production was basically to support the translation of the play into English, which was the first time to happen. That was in 2013. And then, this production caught interest uh, by Martin Segal Theatre Center in New York, where they actually uh, organized a stage reading of the play and we were invited to present on our work. And then we traveled to Chicago, where we, I directed another stage reading of the play. And then to uh, Belgium, to Tonnevis uh, Theatre, where we also spoke about the news and our work on the news, because we went on to produce another play of the news by, in English, with, in collaboration with the Lebanese American University here in Beirut. Um, and then also we did uh, works by Lebanese theater playwright Ethan Mahmoud in English and Arabic in the same year, in New York in English and Lebanon in Arabic. But also we do original work, divine work, for instance, work like uh, the play we did, Watch Your Step, which is a site-specific prominent performance on our memories of the Lebanese Civil War. Recently I did a prominent performance on campus uh, to honor the janitors at AUP because this year we're celebrating the 150th anniversary of campus. Uh, another category would be historical, historical reenactments, which is yesterday we had the first performance of uh, this is going to be a series of work we did. Uh, I uh, directed uh, the reenactment of three historical speeches by women given at AUP in the early last century. So this has been our work. Also, we produced, like, we transferred an, an American, like, contemporary work by Tracy Lenz into Arabic. This was 
the official launching production of Tahweer Laser Company in Lebanon. Um, right now, we're actually working on two classical plays, one by Cervantes, one by Shakespeare, King Lear, and the, the Dialogue of the Dogs, uh, to celebrate the 400th anniversary of both uh, playwrights. Um, actually, what uh, I just want to comment on two things that other people mentioned on this panel. I'm just going to end with a question to my two co-panelists and to you, everyone. Um, basically, what Hassan said about um, uh, work net, I think this has been my, if I want to reflect on my experience as, as a theatre maker, it, it has been my case. My work created these networks. For instance, I'll just give you an example. Right now, I'm co-directing King Lear with um, a British uh, a director, Rachel Valentine Smith, from the Faction Theatre Company in London, who I met in New York at Lincoln Center. Uh, everything else, we've been really focused on the work, and the work led to very interesting and productive kind of networks. It's not the other way around. And the other thing that Iman said, and I think this is something that really touched me, uh, and, uh, you know, and, well, uh, about the laboratory here, right? The, you know, everyone working on their own. And I think this is something that really hurts me and annoys me, especially in Lebanon. And I'm just going to be a little bit provocative here because this is what the organizers ask us to do. It's unfortunate that we work in clicks, right? Everyone's doing their work. And, uh, you know, I, I personally do an effort to go and see everyone else just to, because I'm interested, one, to see what's happening, and also because it's such a small, tiny country, we cannot be this defectors from each other. And I think what's happening right now is positive with the Medina Theatre Festival, if you've heard about it, the Medina Theatre is celebrating their 20th anniversary, and they're bringing 20, at least 20 local directors to work together and perform, uh, you know, they're, they're putting on 25 different shows within a matter of 10 days, and I think this is fabulous, this is what we need. The other thing um, that I wanted to uh, or clo close with, actually, is the question. Uh, I've been thinking about this idea of networking a lot, and as I said, when I reflected on my experience, it, it's my work that ma matters for me, not, you know. So I, I'm just going to ask this question. Do we, how, how to maintain our integrity and sincerity when we're, while networking? I do understand and I support the idea that networking or networks are a great resource for any artist. But how do we maintain our sincerity and integrity while networking? To put it in other words, do we really need networks to advance our art? Yes, we do network, need to network to advance probably our you know, uh, popularity or uh, careers, but is it a must to advance our art? Uh, thank you. Thank you, Sahar. Sahar actually took my role in the last bit and opened up discussion. So I think it's up to there are 25 minutes, which is good. Um, if sorry, okay. if any of the panelists would like to respond or to open up, actually, we, we would like to hear from you. I mean, actually, last night we wanted to change uh, the structure, but it was too late. We wanted you to be more involved in the discussion, so but it was too late. So. Hi, um, I just wanted to come back on what you just said because you, you literally took the words out of my mouth um, when you said our oh, network's changing the art or we're just changing the network. One thing I wrote down listening to everyone is have we come to network saturation point? Have we, you know, I've been a member of ITM on and off for about 20 years, but I'm still here. And I think the reason why I am still here, and I've been away and I've come back again, is precisely because it's changed my perspective. So maybe we do network to network, uh, but I do think it advances perspective, and I find that one of the most important things currently um, than ever. I think it's so crucial that we continue to exchange ideas more than just knowledge sharing, but to exchange ideas and to really listen and to, to be open to how other perspectives influence you and influence your own art and influence the own way, your own way of making things. So um, please continue. 
طيب شكرا للمتدخلين حقيقة كان في كم جملة All the different approaches and testimonies that you had about the networks are really interesting. So, and also in addition to what the question that you had asked, but I would like to highlight what George said when he said that networks are drive for change, growth, and transformation. And uh, Stephen said that networks are members and that uh, everything uh, is in partnerships. So. In, so both these statements are very important, and I don't doubt that uh, this is the real nature of networks, but I don't know to which extent this is true. I'm speaking about the regional level, but also about the international level, but in a more general way. Didn't all the networks where we are working transform into institutions? What is different between institutions that create networks and networks? I know that theoretically there is a difference, but practically, does this difference exist? The real difference should come from the difference between networking and networks, because networking is done by institutions and individuals, but networks are in our structures. And it's not just about the process of networking. I would have liked to have someone from ITM in the panel, someone from ITM core team, unless I understood wrong the objective of this panel. Please use the microphone. Yes, but the experience of managing the network as a structure, because all the panelists are members and networks, but we w would like to see the management of the network because this is the drive after all, if I understood things right. So is it an institution made of many members or is the network only the members? She facilitated the path uh, for me through her intervention because I always have this question on my, my, on my mind. And if I'm not wrong, there is a substantial difference between networking and network. If we look at it in our region and in the other regions. Uh, this is why I think it was necessary to explain how ITM works. Because I have done a research about cultural management and I was responsible for working on the networks and it was helpful for me because I did a very big research and I presented something that was academically really convincing but still afterwards I had a million questions in my head that were not answered. So I went there and I saw how they worked in departments, departments that cross work like constellations and I understood the many things but it was also necessary to understand things even more and to go beyond that. So maybe we need to have success stories like about how we take care of arts. We need to monitor the successful experiences to classify them and maybe put them in a book, not just publish them on the Internet, even though things uh, change quickly with time. So this is what I want to say, Stefan, only the French Ministry of Culture gives you this Christmas, or is it also done by other ministries? And the EU, the EU 60%, but 40% by the ministry, by the French Ministry on its own. And I also have a question to Iman. I always call her Yima, I don't know why. So Iman, the network the performing art network also takes care of the Palestinians that are outside but how can you do that it was really difficult very difficult to get you inside Lebanon you can't imagine what we had to do so that you were able to come here so how can you do that how can you communicate with the Palestinian community where 
with all the borders, with all the walls. And Sufyan, I have a question also for you. What you have done is a great achievement, what you have done with the Tunisian Ministry of Education through our experience with the Ministry of Culture and Tunisia. We knew that things were really great, but when the ministry changed, they put like a million obstacles in front of us. So how will you be able to do an agreement across all the cliques, across all the groups, across all the ministries in this very sensitive moment in the Tunisian history? So how will you be able to put some security pins? How will you be able to do all of this for all the region? This is a great job, but also here I have a million questions. Sorry, Hassan, but I got here and you had already started. إذن أعتقد أن رنا تريد أن توسع السؤال حتى توضحه قبل السؤال التالي. Yes, I had this question also for you. Is there a difference between the networks that are born through a decision by governmental institutions like what Stefan explained to us, or if I understood well, and between the networks that are born because there are many people in one domain or that have one cause and decided that they needed something to bring them all together. Um, yeah, I think your question is quite clear. Uh, uh, and probably it's, a, it's an ongoing uh, challenge for networks. Uh, <laughs> not to institutionalize. So it is indeed. I think ITM, uh, and I hope the members around me will uh, agree, is still uh, trying to be a networking place more than a network as an institution. It's born as an initiative from the field. It was really the practitioners that start, that felt the urge to do more than just meet during a festival. And they wanted to serve the sector, to, to indeed make the independent sector stronger, uh, more informed, to help each other. It was actually it was a, an act of generosity of about 10 people that thought, okay, we can sit together, exchange our ideas and learn from each other, but why not share it with the group? And then they started, and in, by that time you had a real division between Western Europe and Eastern Europe, and crossing that uh, iron wall was already, uh, iron curtain was already a big um, effort. By now, I think we still try to keep those values, that it is about sharing, it's about generosity, it's about solidarity, it's about connecting. It's never about making your own organization sell their productions. It's not about co-production as such. It's more about sharing uh, know-how, sharing your experience, uh, trying to understand better what else to, to learn from that. And then there grow uh, new connections that end up in corporations as well as in So it makes your organization stronger, hopefully. We also forget us on but it is, it's very much the members that make the talk <laughs> The fact we are here is because we know that the members of our member are all the And that's, uh, and I think it is, it's, it's not about that, but it's, it's, the network is not, and that's a big difference with the That's why ICM got its first informal European theater meeting, it was called, and informal was really chosen to be a contract, contrast of an institution. It's not an institution, it's in front, and we try to keep that. I think informality is. It's very different from the start of Sigostrada that's the state started, but okay, you can, we can meet in the middle and try to it. We have another question from the audience before perhaps we can answer it first, and then this is the name of the Good morning. I speak a bad English, so to be funny. As Ali said, uh, well, 
to be a little bit practical, I think that a network is a tool, it's not an objective. It's like culture policies. So uh, maybe uh, here, as a network, <laughs> we, uh, we have to have a, a reflection about how can we uh, work together between uh, our, our countries from our perspective and the countries I don't, mean, I don't like the, the change more than South, but in fact, we need in South uh, professionalism, we need technical jobs, we need administrative jobs, we need democracy, we need human rights. We have in the North something of what we need. We have in the South something of what you need in the North, some contents, some uh, uh, how to bring audience in the Arabic neighborhoods, for example, and so on. There are some, some examples. We can be more uh, practical if we do some work together, because network for us is a protection. International for us in the South. It's uh, also a pressure, a political pressure uh, against, against or with or through our governments to have democratic regimes. So, if we are agree that we can work together in the, some internationalization of human rights, we can do something good. If network is an objective for having money, or as a travel agency, it's not practical. And we, we see, we know, that there are some network uh, based on this. The European Union uh, obliged us to be in a network for having funds, for example. I think the, the question is, for what we are doing it? It's the same question about cultural policy. We don't ask ourselves, uh, since two days, what? Why we need a cultural policy? For democracy, for human development, for having citizens, for having what? For having social development, for having public space, which public space, and so on. We are speaking about how to do a cultural policy, but we don't ask ourselves the first step, why? After maybe we can speak about economical development. We are not so pure. I don't know how we say it in English. In, in our countries to, to work with culture for excellency, artistic excellency, I think. We are in the step to use culture for anthropological way, but use human rights to be a citizen or to have democracy. So, Maybe, maybe, as a militant, <laughs> we can work between some organization in the north, some organization in the south, who have the same ideas, working on why we are doing it. Maybe we will have some pressure on European Union, UNESCO, and so on. Thank you. Many questions, and we have only 10 more minutes, so we need the panelists to respond. Thank you. This, this is just an example of a, a non network that's happening in the UK at the moment. Um, about five years ago, a few people got together worrying about the funding for the arts in general. And it's become a movement, and they're very clear it's not a network, it's a movement, it has no membership, uh, no formality. But it, there is a London one under a London all around the country centre. We meet, we meet once a week for an hour, at half past eight in the morning before we all go on to our work. And what I've been impressed about, and it's what, it's what you said, Sam, it's actually, we have somebody from the Royal Opera House, and we have a solo performance artist who's working on there. We have galleries, we have theatres, and we have right across art forms, right across scales, meeting to talk about trying to raise the profile of the arts in Britain. Not, not just with the MPs, but more importantly with the people vote for those MPs and the, and the audiences and the teachers and normal people and trying to spread the profile but actually it has been very generous and sharing and it, it's the first time in all my many years of working in the arts I've seen 
all the uncles working together rather than really in competition with each other, and all the, the younger, penniless aunts, it's actually being supported by the individual institutions. And it's, it, who knows where it would go, but it is, it's very successful at the moment. It is absolutely not a network, and all it's really required of us is time. Mm -hmm. There was a question there. Let's try to make it short if possible because of time constraints. So to make it short, short then I'm saying I think that the division between networking and networks is really important because um, Stefan's description of um, uh, Sebastian I think is very good and, and um, where it came from, you were saying, is the need to network is what are other people doing. Because I think, I think in, in, in Europe that is often the need. So, I, for example, we got together a, a network that was bringing together the Cirque Stardom network and the outdoor network in Scotland. So a network of networks within, within a network, if you like. And it, again, it was Christmas, it was easy to do that. Funders like to do that uh, because in, well, two simple reasons. One, it puts everybody together, so they only have to deal with one big person, not loads. And two, it's very easy to judge success. Either people turn up and are part of that network, in which case you keep funding it, or they don't, and you don't. So it's simple. So they like it. But I think that's driven out of, um, often, an inability to network informally. Something that I think is very good, in my experience, in, in the Middle East, people do that much better. So there isn't necessarily that need for networking for that sake. And I think it's why Judith's movement that she, that she talked about is so different and so good for us. Because what, if you're not careful, that networking just creates a load of boxes for people who define themselves by circus artists, street artists. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. There's a need for it. But I think here we're talking about networks for advocacy for creating a different infrastructure around us rather than necessarily you know, the desire to, to come together to understand what each other is doing. I think the two need to be a bit separated. Let's take another question so I we can move back to the panelists. Um, I, I was thinking um, Networks is a strategy for us to work together to be able to find uh, what we lack, if there is a lack in resources, for example, or in opportunities. I have two experiences, one with the UNESCO and Arabesque Network. I was in the core team, and I always had a problem about making the members more efficient in the network. And they always asked, how can we use this network? What will this network give us? How will it be beneficial? They said, if there are opportunities, then maybe we can be efficient. So we need to believe that our presence together will give us more strength, will reinforce our work, and will make us drive change. Also, when you're working on alliances so that we can have the street theater in Egypt, people were really afraid. They were saying, how will we do this? Because, as you know, we have the law against demonstration, etc. So this way, maybe we're giving ourselves to the security, but maybe if we're all together, then we can change something. So we had all these ideas, but because they really trusted us, because we worked with everyone before, this is what uh, made us succeed in the street theater. So yes, believing that together we're stronger and we can have all the necessary resources and get to change, this is maybe the problem in the way networks are defined in the Middle East. So Thank you. Should we go, um, if you have anything to say, it's Canada's team. There were a lot of questions. So, uh, to answer Amanda's question, so, uh, at the beginning I made The network was decided by the person in charge of the institution, which is a bit different. 
it means that at some point the director of our review is saying we need to get together more formally than just meeting during festivals or during whatever occasion. So it's not a decision from the ministry, it's a decision from a person. Then it's true that the person working within an institution supported by the state, it's easier to get a funding, but it's not, you know, top to bottom. And the institution is, we work as an agency, but our legal status is a non-profit organization. So we are part of the civil society as well, just to be clear. As far as, the, since I work in an institution, but I coordinate the network, I can see the, the differences. And what I can tell you is that we are much more flexible than the institution. We are much more horizontal. Uh, when we have a question, it's really about the guitar, meaning that we are thinking right now about what is going to be the future of the network. And we basically had the members working on it in London. We just, you know, and one of the members is here, so he knows about it. And uh, it was basically two days of these are the topics, tell me what are the needs, the challenges, make a proposition, what do you want to do, etc. and etc. So it's not, you know, like this, it's more like this. And we, the risk of institutionalization is present, but you can put some mechanism to counteract. So it's all about governance. So for instance, we have a steering committee, and the steering committee is elected every two years, and we try to have a good representation of the members of the countries, and, and I'm just the, just the coordinator. So you know, I ask questions, they answer me, and I put in place. So that's how you, you know, you're safer than an institution that is more like this, especially in France. Okay. Um, and as far as networks and networking is true, there is a difference. And uh, informal networking is super important. But informal networking doesn't just happen. You need to build space for it. And you need to, you know, you construct a moment where you can actually share other things, ideas, and etc. And not in a, in a workshop or not in a this kind of front of relations but with a brain or something. So you can we do that and we can do that. It's not you know I don't see necessarily an opposition. I don't know if I answer before. Um Emma I think I can on the speak more big tier and what the hell no I think I'm not here today. Tier and Maybe we'll eat its own members. And this was a central question for us because we didn't want the network to be stronger than its members. We don't want the network to be strong, but the members weak. We wanted for the members to be stronger, stronger than the network because it's their presence that makes the network strong. And the idea was uh, not to have competition for uh, funding. So we, and also we didn't want the small institutions that are outside the network, whether they're big or small, and are working in the same field. We didn't want to, people to compete within the network to get these kinds of funding from these institutions. And it was very important also not to have uh, redundance because we are not uh, an organization, we're not an institution, we're a network. Sometimes we have a problem because sometimes the Ministry of Culture considers itself as an institution, so it does activities as if it were a cultural institution and not a ministry for policies. So we had also these questions and we answered them. We said it was very important to have the clarity in this regard. As for your question, Hanan, yes, of course it's difficult. It's not easy to communicate with Palestinians everywhere. But the idea is that at least because we have division, we need to have unity, political unity and geographical unity because we're against all kinds of, all kinds of divisions. So we rely also on the institutions that work in this regard. So there are institutions that work, for example,